Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more. Let's play Starcom Nexus. In the last episode, we took out the Chitek base, eliminating it after we had cured the parasitic fungal infection we had acquired while on the sur surface of a planet. <laughs> That was causing me to have my crew incapacitated. Looking back at it now as well, looking back at it means that when I think back to yesterday when I had recorded that part, it occurs to me that we lost, not lost, we had about 9 or 10 crew incapacitated total. And I think what I'm going to do, as you can hear, is add them to the donation mug. <laughs> I think we're up to about 20? 20, $25 at the moment in that mug. And we are still in the early parts of the game. I'm curious as to what the total donation will be at the end of this, as you guys probably are as well. Anyway... We've not really made too much more progress in creating a bigger ship at the moment. I'm hoping we can get some more resources now that we've taken the debris gatherer research, whatever that was called, to have increased drop rates. And on that note as well, I think we will start by... Well, I was going to swing up past the asteroids in order to destroy a few of them, but I think that's a little too boring for you guys at home. Since we have, haven't have yet increased my detection radius for our radar, I think we'll just double back to the last place we had been at here. Eliminate any Chitek which are located here. Actually, I think this is where we did the big battle. So let's... I want to get back there, defeat any other Chitek, come over here, and then continue with... Heading to the next warp nexus. So let's do so. What else did we discover? We found a time sphere, is what our scientists think it is, on the surface of a planet. Which looks like it stores some information of some sort in it, but we were unable to actually open it at this point. I wasn't able to figure out... This, whatever this is. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Both of the... I forgot. We had we had left some, uh, some cruisers here. Well, I guess we're going to go right in the middle of it, right? Uh, when we destroyed the Chitek base, uh, we didn't... Dis we discovered that they were using drones as a form of, uh, well, attack. Oh, God. And when I, when I left them... Oh, we had, uh, discovered, not discovered, we had left behind some of these cruisers, two of them, a well-spaced, which is going to make it difficult for us to eliminate, holy crap, already at half our hit points, to, uh, it would be tricky for me to explore the rest of this area, since we're here now, we're going to go ahead and try to eliminate these two uh, cruisers here and now, so we can clear this area of Chitek again. We want to be kind of behind them so we don't have to worry about their missiles. In the last uh, video, we had also upgraded our weapon systems to be able to fire even if damaged at 25% efficiency. So we can probably do this battle, although I would like to heal a bit. We want to stay behind it and we want to stay away from it so we can get our hold points back up again. Hovering around half is not, not very good. It's better than being dead. <laughs> but I didn't cover what happens to me if I die, did I? So, if I die in actual combat, as opposed to just trying to show you guys different ways you can be destroyed, uh, I think then we should probably put the entire 
amount of our crew into the donation jar. I think that's fair. So that's what we're going to do. Grab three idiom. That's that improves our. That, that's more uh, plasma turrets if we want them. At the moment, we're I'm looking forward to doing battles like this, even though we're taking hits because I want more resources. I would like to upgrade uh, upgrade. I want to research art an armor module, which should help our survivability somewhat. Oh, that's a frigate. We're gonna destroy it so we don't have to worry about its missiles. Very good. I want to have our weapons prepared a little bit. Oh, still just barely got in range. Get out of that range. Oh, hey! It's another one of those swarm drones. Oh, we weren't able to capture that one. Okay. We all right, we captured our first swarm drone last episode too. We discovered that we can use a our uh, tractor beam to grab them. We can't hail them. They're launched as scouts, gathering information and bringing them back someplace. In any case, it provided us with quite a bit of research, so we absolutely want to get more of them. A bit more gidium and titanium. And we're still in combat music. Oh, oh and now we're not. All right, nice. Chitek eliminated from this area temporarily. They like uh, these few next spots. We're going to encounter more Chitek, I think, going forward in these areas. It's a good spot to come by and wipe them out if you need some resources. And we're desperate for resources at this moment. We want... All right, we have enough that we can get a single module constructed at this point with 100 titanium. But we're going to want like two or 300 titanium. Uh, we actually have enough chiriite and gold to make engines and another uh, reactor. So that is probably next. Probably a reactor? At least one? Another engine? But it's a titanium we need more to be able to construct all those modules. And we'll also probably want to unlock armor modules when we get back, too. Our hole is almost back to full. We lost two more people. There we go. Cost paid. Let's head to this warp nexus and see where this takes us. Hope you guys are finding this interesting. I hope maybe I've convinced my brother Dave to hopefully at least fire up the game. At the time I'm recording this, it is June 26th, 2022, and the Steam Summer Sale is going on. That's just a singular scout. Uh, did we head up th that way? That scout can stay. If it decides it wants to investigate us, we'll turn around and deal with it, but it's not worth chasing it down. We left this planet down here, unexplored in this sector, so let's see what might be on this. I Again... I like this game a lot. I really loved the exploring new planets. And I was, I found it to be, it's not quite one more turn, but it's one more planet to scan type of addiction to the game. This is, a, this is made more addicting by you constantly getting more research. Those numbers go up, you get more energy, you do more damage, you fly a little faster, you get more modules, you can design new types of ships and so on. When I had first been playing it, I never thought I would be interested in it, and I had originally told myself I wouldn't be interested in making, like, big ships. And man, that wasn't true at all. I decided, <laughs> when I was able to make cruisers, I immediately started making large vessels. I made battleships and carrier types of ships as well. It was awesome. I loved the different feel that these things could have, based on the upgrades you were giving them. I guess we should also talk with the Sorids while we're here. Hail again, friends! Your presence warms us like the sun on a basking rock. How will we be of service to our Starcom friends? We'd like to trade with you. Our government requires the request be made through formal diplomatic channels. Normally, that would be the equivalent of your trade ministry. 
Because of your unusual situation and the demonstrations of friendship between the Sword Republic, there may be some flexibility. I'll make inquiries. Was there anything else you wish to discuss? Nope, we'll be on our way. So they won't trade with us yet. Uh, I'm guessing what's going to happen. I don't remember it very well either, but I'm thinking that they will probably reach out to Kite Station and make a formal uh, treaty of some sort to trade with them. I wonder if they'll be able to get coffee from our lizard friends. And what are you? You are charging us, little scout. We will deal with you and turn off the combat music. There we go. Very good. No, we won't. There's another scout somewhere around here that's not on our radar. Okay, so let's take a quick peek. We didn't miss anything. Let's take this warp nexus south. Combat's here. Who's fighting? Sorids and Chitex. Let's lend some assistance to our new friends, as it were. An orbiter! We have another type of space station here. Hey, this is kind of fun! We get to actually see a combat between the other races as well. We don't want to accidentally just oh good fire on the swords. Hey, they cleared out this space as well. Nice. We'll grab the free Chiralite. I'm guessing the orbiters must be their science stations. So they're trying to, I guess, well, do their own research here. Eliminating them will hopefully slow them down and repulse them from claiming these sections of space. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to talk with you. I meant to scan the planet. No anomalies. Let's go back up and check the planet that was near the Nexus. And we'll head down to that Nexus point in a bit. It's interesting for me, to, now having played this game, playing it a second time, because the galaxy map is a bit different. I, or maybe, it, maybe it's not. No, it's not. No, I'm sorry. No, ignore me. I don't have a good memory of it, having not been through these areas too often. Oh, wow! Look at this planet! The coloring of it just makes it seem like there's all sorts of different toxic bogs on this. Green clouds? Pools of the fluorescent green coloring? There's something down there. I'm sure our people definitely want to set foot on this planet. Let's see what's down here. Yeah, look at the green glow here, too. This colorful planet should be at the extreme low end of the Corwitz lee habit Habitability Index. Is that a thing that exists? A thick, hot, hydrofluoric bog, fog, fluoric fog, actually, rises out of volcanic vents. It would eat through any kind of organic matter in seconds. Yet somehow, life has found a way to flourish here. Several extremophile fungus-like life forms grow in abundance. Samples will increase our understanding of the conditions in which life can exist. This reminds me of this one... So, I guess a little bit about me and exploring and how much I love it. Uh, I loved watching this series called Our Blue Earth, which details life that utilizes the ocean or lives in it. The Abyss, in particular, is a section of our oceans here on Earth that I love reading or hearing about. Just the crazy creatures that live down there. And there are these uh, vets down in the dark. And life uh, exists around them, utilizing the heat that they provide. I thought that was amazing. There's no sun that reaches down there, and yet things still live. Makes me realize, I think, hope, hopefully this is an accurate statement, that there must be life on other planets out there somewhere, existing in ways that we cannot even begin to imagine at this point. I somehow doubt we've discovered everything that there is in the vast world that could possibly exist at this moment. Hopefully I get to live to see some more exciting uh, discoveries. Well, discovered. 
I've lived through quite a few things that that weren't around before I existed. Uh, some of this won't seem that important, but like VCRs, t television, we have virtual reality now. The internet exists. We have uh, different ways to deal with diseases. MRI scans, CT scans, different ways to produce vaccines. All this amazing technology. And just in the 40 years of my life. I'm, I'm just imagine what my niece and nephews will eventually see. I hope that we continue, uh, that we exist in another 60 years from now for them. Anyway, we have a beautiful picture over here. I like to look at the mountains, the forested mountains here. And the, f and the, oh, and the fog. I can barely see something here. A structure of some sort. So you guys are aware of what I'm doing when I'm recording these episodes is when I land on a planet, I might accidentally begin reading the first sentence, but then immediately I tear my eyes away to stare at the picture over here so I can appreciate what's, what it shows and try to guess what we're going to get a description of. A large starship, okay, so that's what this is, lies frozen in what is at first glance appears to be ice, but the survey team reports that it is, in fact, glass. Oh, this is all glass here covering it. I thought this was like fog coming off the mountain or some clouds. No. The team's geologist speculates on some processes that might envelop a derelict starship in molten silica, but he is at a loss to explain how it formed naturally clear glass. In any case, there is a valuable derelict trapped under 50 meters of glass. Okay, so what did I do last time? I, so... When I was presented with these options, I thought a laser would be a poor choice. Because I, to my recollection, glass reflects laser light, right? So I decided not to do that. So I tried to use the drill, I think, at first. So let's make an attempt to do that. Have the team cut through the glass with the lander's drill. The lander's adamantine tip drill was able to easily penetrate the glass surface. Unfortunately, after a few meters, glass dust causes it to jam. The team is able to clear it, but the process soon repeats itself. So I tried high explosives next. I wouldn't use the laser. Several well-placed charges managed to fracture the glass enough that the team can carefully lift out a large chunk. With painstaking repetition, they're able to burrow down to the ship's hull. I suppose I should say this really, really quickly if I did not mention it earlier. Whenever I get presented with the option to do something that I have done before, and if I recognize an event, I will tell you guys if I recognize it or not and remember it, and I will attempt to do things in a similar way, even if it may lead to the demise of some of my crew, because I, I liked the writing for some of this very much. Anyway... The ship's hull is remarkably well preserved, showing no signs of having been immersed in molten glass. The team's hopes of valuable salvage are dashed when, the breach, when they breach the hull. The ship was stripped bare prior to somehow being scuttled in glass. Any equipment that wasn't removed seems to have been destroyed with energy weapons. The team is about to pack it in when the geologist notices a broken data crystal mixed in with glass fragments the crew tracked in. Scanning it with the lander's computer reveals some corrupted telemetry data and what appears to be two sets of precise navigational coordinates somewhere in this galaxy. Your first officer adds them to the nav computer. A quest! Let's see what was down there. Oh, or not. Hold on, let's wait a few more seconds. Sometimes it could take a little bit for the quest to trigger. We need the away team to come back. Okay, survey complete. Let's go ahead and see. Hmm. I don't see a quest. Oh! We do have... Okay. Oh! We gained knowledge, I think, of these two warp gates. And we see a nebula out here. 
let's see if this I guess I'm gonna assume this warp nexus next next to us does not bring us to the nebula let's go take it anyway we'll explore that sector and we'll double back here to the nebula yeah, it looks like the sorry are heading in here we'll wait our turn give them a few seconds to get through the, the nexus all right let's go after them I don't actually know if we will uh, detect them here, like if they're going to be on the other side of this Texas. I don't think it works that way. They are not. Okay. Well, let's explore all this. Here's a planet south of us, a green planet. This I keep forgetting to try to tr track what green means for planets. Class A2 planet, unsurveyed. Looks rather mountainous from space. Looks like there's some ice on the pole here, though. Something on it. Let's go get it. Oh. This looks like some sort of gigant monorail down here. Or some sort of pipeline. Scanners show that this planet's equator is entirely encircled by a massive toroidal ring. T oh, wow. Toroidal ring structure, mostly buried several hundred meters below the bedrock, surfacing at a few points. The team's physicist quickly realizes that it is an enormous particle accelerator. Oh, okay, gotcha. Going around the entirety of the planet. Unfortunately, some of the key control hardware is missing, likely plundered in the years since the structure was last operational. The team engineer reckons she could replace the missing hardware using the survey fabricator with 15 units of adamantine. We don't have any adamantine at the moment. Return to the ship for now. I'm going to mark down what this requires as well. 15 units of probably gain some research by turning it back on. I get the impression that our research team has seen something like this before, but if there's any hope that we can earn more research points by turning on that device, we'll do so eventually. Ooh, this is a purple planet. This is a gas giant, I'm guessing. Yep. Gas giant C. I like the coloring of it. It might be of Neptune. For some reason, I think of colors like this being methane gas but there's nothing for us to detect on this planet so we ignore it we have another greenish question mark up ahead and another i'm guessing that's a gas giant oh a non-activated version of this so there this planet probably has another one of those eye devices here Let's look at another desert planet. Two enormous pillars of weathered rock. Yep, look at this. Holy crap, can you Im imagine seeing that on the horizon? Assuming this is mountains and you have this ink, like you could see this from hundreds of miles away, I'm guessing. Two enormous pillars of weathered rock stretch into the sky. Like the previous set, the larger of the pair has a control room within. And it too has a control room allowing the opening of an eye do so. There was a deep rumble followed by a surge of EM radiation above the pillar. On board the ship, an energy reading is detected elsewhere in the system. You know, I didn't make the connection between turning these on and activating this when I had played the game the last time. I think I always managed to somehow reach these plants and turn the eye on before I discovered the warp gate 
I'm wondering if there's a reason why you would why you would want to leave them off. Maybe we shouldn't turn them all on. And another one of these colored glass gas giants. Nothing on this one either, though. Let's go to this planet, and we'll take the warp nexus back. It looks like there is no... Because I want to get to... That brown dwarf. It looks like there's no warp nexus to take us south of here, either. So, we'll be traveling slowly. We should definitely see if we can get more research to increase our speed. Maybe we should go back to Kite Station, replace our crew research thrusters next to help us get around a little faster. I hear the warp drone. Uh, sorry, the swarm drone. Well, I don't see it. Oh no, there is a there is a warp nexus here. Oh wait, no, that's that's when we took a red. Where we took? I hear the warp that warp that swarm drone out to our left. It sounds like it's gonna speed past this planet. Let's try to get it. Nice. We've caught the golden snitch. That's a classics reference. Uh, Cervantes, I think. <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, this is another swarm probe. Unfortunately, its data bank seemed to have malfunctioned, and it retained a little data. Ah, it's a shame. But I'll still take the five research points for that easy capture. So let's go back to Kite Station. We replenish our crew, we'll research thrusters, and then we'll head back and explore a few places that were a bit further away than I like to travel just using our, basically, impulse drive. Okay, so, back to Kite Station. And we have so far spent almost a month in game. I think we arrived here around April 6th. It is now April 27th, 2620. We've done a whole lot, I think, in just a month. Let's see. We have another message. All hydroponic sections are going over to food growth starting Saturday. Any ornamental or recreational plants remaining at the time will be given away or destroyed. Oh, sad, but yeah, you need food. While you were galvanizing, well, galvanizing around Xeno space, we got a surprise visit from a Sorid delegation. Apparently, our application for trade partner was approved. We were able to trade some of our unused equipment and non-essential commodities for fresh food and organic supplies. I'm probably going to get in a lot of trouble if we ever get back home for signing a trade treaty. But well done. <laughs> Thank you, Miranda Price. Glad we could get some food here. Hopefully they bring coffee for you folks. I'm so sorry. Was there anything else? We could use more crew. You got it. We got some fresh volunteers right out of training. Anything else? How's morale? Holding together. But yours are still fraying a bit. Alright, that's all for now. Anything new for Pillman? Nope. And nothing new with Lieutenant John Chiang either. All right, research. Only have a hundred, but that's enough to take turbo thrust. Allows the use of turbo thrust, a high, a high energy burn for a speed boost. Twenty-five points left over is not enough to take anything else, so we'll just have to hold on to it. We also didn't increase our modules at all at the moment, the size of our ship, so we're done. It looks like we've got turbo thrust technology. Great! We can finally cruise with this tech. We can also really cruise with this tech, but watch your energy levels. Let's see. At the moment, with only the thrust enabled we are and three reactors, we are not losing energy. So we can thrust indefinitely, as long as we're not firing as well. Alright, so where do I want to go now? 
I wouldn't mind fighting a little bit more. Let's double back here and see if there's any... Oop. Uh, something I should point out is that occasionally uh, on this map, remember that map time is not paused, you might sail past a Nexus Gateway and then be, be unable to utilize it to get uh, to get someplace. I want to fight some more Chitek. Uh, so let's go here first. Good. And it sounds like some of them just warped in as well. So let's go down here and eliminate this group. Destroyer frigates, destroyers. Uh oh. That was like four missiles, so I think there's a. Um. Is there two frigates down there? But I suspect it's actually a cruiser. Oh, or I'm wrong. Hold on, this will be it. It is a battle cruiser, okay. Uh, I want the frigate destroyed first. Oh, do you, Tim? We should be able to outrun those missiles. Nice. We get that destroyer. We're going right towards the missile. We're gonna have to try to shoot these down. Whew, good. That one missed us. And as before, we stay behind this. If I can, we're gonna have to shoot down some of these. While we're taking it apart, we'll also be able. Well. Hopefully to get some more resources. Let's get the destroyer destroyed so it stops annoying us. So we get a bit of damage, but we're, we're okay. Or rather, we'll be okay. Destroyer eliminated. We got some, we got some gold. Nice. It's your light. Man. Titanium, I do love, again, the extra salvage research. Very glad the Chitek are do not have missiles on the back. Well, the back of that ship. I don't think you're allowed to put missiles on the back of a ship. Launchers, missiles, and drone bays must be placed forward-facing. And like engines, you will not be allowed to place anything in front of them. All right. Oh, hold on a second. We're about to leave. It looks like some Chirolite behind. Let's grab that. How do I recognize the coloring enough to, get, to accurately say what it is? I do not know, but I'm glad I do. What can I say? I like the game. I, pl I, I played it for at least, I think it was close to 40 hours before I got to the ending. And I had a great deal of fun. I really like the ha very hard difficulty level, which reminds me, by the way, everyone. If I go to options, current game, we can see what the difficulty currently is. You can change this difficulty to make it harder if we want. I played the game on hard originally. We're playing it now on very hard, and the difficulty is four. It logarithm logarithmically increases, so ultra would be 16. Ultra plus is 32. I'm going to leave it on very hard for this Let's Play. Actually, no, it must, there must be another difficulty in between that goes up to eight. Because it doubles every single, every single upgrade. But I'm going to leave it here. I think this is a good spot for me to, well, currently leave it at. If we find the game's too easy, we could always increase the difficulty then. At a different, at, at that at that time. We want to go back he, uh, here now? I want kind of want to fight more Chitek. But we kind of have to then. No, we don't. Okay. It seems like cruisers and what have you will not be granting us any extra weapon parts from the Chitek. So we'll not 
bother them for a bit. Let's go back up to that uh, nebula. Have we? Do we have any adamantine? No adamantine. I think at this point, in the last, when I was playing the game earlier, I had at least like twelve of it, mostly from destroying space stations. Or maybe there was maybe there was some other planets I missed in this one that didn't spawn that gave me it. Oh, we have more Chitek and Sorids. You can get other technologies, by the way, from destroying or research occasionally. From, like, if we were to destroy a Sorid ship, we might gain something from, from doing that, beyond just resources. But I feel a little too guilty going to war against friendlies, so we're not going to do so. Alright, let's head down to that nebula. As you can see, around planets our thrust has more than doubled our speed. And we should go up to about a hundred, I think, in deep space or close to it. I'm going to want to be careful about flying into some ordnance out here. I love the orange coloring out here of this. Asteroids! I will totally take the excuse to destroy some asteroids. That asteroid contained a cluster of organic molecules similar to those found in many inha inhabitable worlds. This supports the theory of pans panspermia, or at least it does in this galaxy. Surprised how much research we're finding from destroying asteroids. I was not this lucky early on. The last time I had done this. Looks like these asteroids contain a, quite a bit of gold. There's some friendlies out here. This brown dwarf seems to be fusing lithium at a mass of 59 Jovians, which is below the previously believed minimum. Always a good idea to fly past the stars, or get close enough to them, if you're assuming you're not going to be destroyed by doing so. And, this looks like a very impressive gas giant. Once again, Swarm drone coming. Let's see if we can catch you. You're probably going up this way afterwards. The data banks of this autonomous probe give us additional insights into the distribution of hydrogen and helium in this galaxy. The upper atmosphere of this gas giant is unusually calm. So calm that it behaves like an enormous cloud chamber allowing us to study high-speed particles on a very large scale. There's a Vendari explorer here, too, making a beeline right for us to trade for technology. Until I get more research, I kind of want to avoid them so that we don't anger them by not giving them any technology based upon what the Sorids said. So let's avoid him right now and head out here to this planet. If he intercepts us on one to one of these other planets, we will go ahead and talk with him. With the research we have, we can now probably take a larger type of ship. So that's the next thing I'm interested in doing when we get back. I wouldn't mind having additional upgrades now of different miscellaneous types. But once again, I think we need more of what we currently have at this point. Ooh, look at this dark planet. No sun. At all, hitting it. Nothing on the planet's surface either. 
Hard to make out even with... What type of... Is it a gas giant? Yes. I can't tell what color it is, though. The nebula mug, I suppose, is blocking the sun's colors from reaching it? The sun's light from reaching it, Tim. We'll get these two plants and double back to the sector we had just left. I'm thinking we'll explore... Well, now that we have thrusters, we'll come out here to explore that sun. Since we can probably get there within a reasonable time frame. It's also a quick save, just in case we accidentally fly into something we're not supposed to. A watery world, with some cover on it as well. No lights, so I'm assuming there's no inhabitants, as it were, on this that use anything like electricity or like. There's something on the planet after all, though. Let's see what's down here. It's an Arctic world. Whew. The survey lander touches down in whiteout conditions. Attempting to pilot the lander any closer to detected anomaly would be suicide. Man, I don't know if this is worth it. Do we lose people to try to get some tech or research? We do have the extreme suits, but that doesn't mean they can't die on the surface of a planet. I'll flip a coin to the side. Sorry, survey team, your life depend. We could use all the research we could get. Heads, they head into the storm. Tails, they hightail it out of there. Oops, I want to catch it. I want to catch it, not let it fall. Head. In they go. Have the team brave the storm. The team spends hours trudging through the blinding blizzard, constantly be thwarted by crevices and sheer cliffs. Eventually, the anomaly signal could no longer be detected. Possibly it was an artifact jet possibly it was an artifact generated by the powerful storm. They didn't lose anybody though, thank goodness. I actually really love walking out in winter storms here in New Jersey. It's it's so different than what life normally is for me. We don't get much many of them, and so when we do have blizzard conditions, well, not blizzard conditions. We have we have winter storms, but everything's going to generally be okay. I like going outside and walking around in it. I get that from my father, who absolutely loves snow. He used to record snow on a camera, just snowstorms that would, that would hit the house. He loved being out in it and looking at it. I think all of his sons, all four of us, uh, got that from him. Ooh. What is making the coloring of these mountains this strange color? More green in the atmosphere here too. Nothing detected, though. Well, I'll take the excuse to destroy a few more asteroids on our way out of here. Got a little bit more titanium as we leave. In case I didn't mention it, asteroids will respawn. If you destroy all the asteroids, leave an area, wait a little bit, and then come back. Alright, how much titanium do we have, by the way? 151? Could really use more. Could really use more. But I'm not going to destroy all the asteroids. Let's get out to, the, uh, to that one star. And we'll probably wrap it up, assuming there's a, way, a gate there. I'd like to end the episode heading back to Kite Station and building us a, a bigger ship. Something you'll notice as we continue to play is that I... I don't have any loyalty to the ship designs. Many people are probably... A probably... Probably... I'm... I'm guessing, this is a pure, pure guess here, but I'm, I'm guessing they 
like building symmetrical ships, like the one I currently have. The guns are spaced evenly on both sides. The ship is pleasant to look at. I've built several ships like this, but I also tried a few asymmetrical builds, where one side has most of the weapon systems located on it, for example. One of the ships I made actually has basically a shield on one side, designed of different armor sections and plasma, and plasma guns, but the other side has missile, ter uh, missile launchers. And I try flying with the shield side facing the enemy that I'm currently engaging in, or most of them, while circling around them like a shark. Worked rather well. Worked rather well. Then I unlocked shields later on, and discovered that shields are very nice, and I don't need to have an actual shielded section of the ship to take hits. But it's still fun to design it, and we're going to try it out together when we finally get access to that blueprint. 101 astro units per second. Very nice. We can get, I think it's 5,000 astro units to cross one of these. So that's about 50 seconds, is that right, to travel a square? No, actually, I think it's 2,500 astro units to cross an entire uh, grid in the game. Hello? A massive derelict. Reminds me of Cryptarch. Look at the size of this thing. We've seen what a cruiser from the Chittek looks like. And we have a we have a scout vessel here, a Corvette, effectively. Good god, look at the size of this. Neutronium in the wreckage. That's worth quite a bit more than than titanium is. Scans indicate this is a debris field from a very large and powerful ship. Structural design was probably more advanced than anything we're capable of building. Adamantine in the ruins as well. We will destroy every single piece of scrap if there's adamantine in it. We might also get lucky enough to find some research. As I was mentioning, what the heck, what the heck's going on, game? Stop that. We discovered a fragment of whatever weapon struck the ship. Given the design, it seems that their enemy had very similar technology levels. I think the game's swapping music. So, as I have been mentioning, scrap comes back. So, if we were to leave, wait like an in-game day, and come back again, this scrap would be here again. And we could redestroy it and gain adamantine and neutronium. A part of me likes this because it means that you don't have to really like. On one hand, I like the struggle. On the other hand, it's nice that you don't feel like you have to grind so much. And I found the combat to be nice and relaxing. Well, is that right? Hectic! For some of the battles, relaxing if it's a, like a small a fleet, and fun, and engaging, so I didn't mind going around and destroying enemies again that I might have engaged previously, like a lane and respawn and killing them again, like we just did with the Chitnek Chitek earlier. Okay, we're gonna mark this. Potentially, we'll want to come back there. How much should we pick up? Let's explore the rest of this sector first. We'll start with going to the sun. We'll sail around it really quick. Ooh, look at the coloring on the nebula here from it. Nothing too special about that one, though. Another Earth-like planet from what we can see. I see oceans on it. Green. Mountains. Clouds. 
And there's even something down there to entice us to visit. Let's see what it could be. Temples, it looks like down here. I wonder what these spheres are located. Very relaxing looking picture here too. This little uh, river. I wonder, I kind of wish there was like a person or the lander was present so I had some sense of scale. Because I always think these are massive structures here. On a high mountain, the remains of a temple have been almost completely reclaimed by nature. Two spheres rest on mossy altars, presumably regarded as religious artifacts. One appears to be mostly composed of titanium. The other is nearly 20% neutronium. Neither occurs naturally on this planet. So how they came to be here is a mystery. Hmm. Someone delivered them here. Apparently we're going to take them apart as well. There is nothing else out here. So let's get to this planet and take a peek at it. Then I guess we head south some more. Or back to Kite Station. I think we should do a little more ex exploring. Oh, our first ringed planet. This planet's rings are not too unusual. Ooh, I want you. Yes! Okay, we got two of those. Uh, hold on. Let's let's first bring up this mission log. I want anomaly survey. Nope. I want uh, journal notices. Conversations. Oh, I'm not. Uh, that's okay. I'm getting confused. The planet's rings are not too unusual, although their orbital velocity is lower than their mass density would predict. Curious. And the probe? This probe spent a considerable amount of time trapped in a dark energy flow and collected considerable data on the phenomenon. The ice crystals in this planet's rings are formed to thin needle-like structures, possibly in response to the same electrostatic static forces that sometimes produce spoke effects. I don't even know what it ha what that means. <laughs> I probably should go start looking up some of this uh, sciencey stuff that our first officer is talking about. It sounds like it could be dangerous though, so we'll avoid flying over the rings. We will sail past this derelict again and see if it respawned any scrap for us on our way back to civilization. I don't think you take too much damage, if any, for flying into debris, but we should be careful just in case. No more debris respawned, at least in the few hours we were exploring the other planets. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure Scrap will respawn at the derelicts eventually. Oh, right. I want to see how much total resources we have now. Nine Animantine. That is not very much, but yet it is also very, very worth having. Just nine. They trade for quite a considerable amount of resources. If I think each Animantine will trade for about 46 titanium at the Intarch Citadel, for example. Maybe we should go back there before we hit the kite station and do a tiny bit of trading first. To ensure we get up to 200 titaniums, we can at least put two different modules on the ship after we research and uh, increase size. I think we probably should do that. Later on in the game, we will have plenty of resources. More resources than we will probably know what to do with. By the end of the game, I wasn't worried about building any mod. We had I had enough to build whatever I wanted within reason, but I had like an extra one thousand five hundred titanium by the time I was the end with the game. But again, that was the end of the game, so I would expect that we wouldn't need it. I wouldn't need anything else at that point. Not everything was researched. I didn't research even the largest type of ship, but I was quite comfortable with the ships I was flying at that point. At the moment, though, it being still the early game, 
we need all the resources we can get. I am flying way past where I want to be. Maybe we should go back to Kite Station. I can look at one of the blueprints for the next ship I want to actually construct. And I see how much I need and what research we need to unlock it. There's no warp gate here, I think. But there is a warp nexus to bring us back to one. What do you guys think? We... We deal with some Chitek first before we head back to Kite Station. Replenish crew if we lost any. We could probably trade with the Sorids. Oh, or the Ulku here. Let's see if they have any new stories since we're in the area. Oh, are you are you you're teleporting out? You are not. Okay. In cool waters, we saw you again. Our story was at a turning. Things for things, things for knowledge. What did we do when we swam together? Things for things. So if I want titanium, they're valuing it at 0.1 per platinum. I'm going to want at least 14 more. And I don't think I need this much chirolite. Or yttrium. So we can probably chain, give three of these because I'm the 50. Five Chirolite. Actually, they don't really value Chirolite that much. I think we could probably give away 18 of these. And I'm going to want Titanium. Let's grab a ton of this. That's, that's good. That's all for now. We need 85 platinum in order to pay them for the knowledge about some sort of deep waters. Oh, what I wanted was right there. There was a, there was a warp gate right there. So let's turn around and go back. Uh, I guess we'll destroy this Chitek Destroyer first. Right, we activated the eye that was near this. Now, I wonder if there's a reason why you don't want to activate the warp gates. It does hint as to where people are located, other races. Someone has to turn it on, for example, and they were turned off for some reason. It's interesting to think of it that way. Oh, crap! The Vidari caught us! We would be delighted to make another exchange of knowledge with you. Offer... High energy bolts. The schematic we've received would be useful for fabricating foodstuffs for some life forms, although not our own. Still, it has some very interesting and unique design aspects. Thank you. While we already have an excellent understanding of the principles of this technology, your information provides some useful enhancements. We now share with you some of our own progress. Do you wish to trade goods as well? Yes, please. Let's see what they have. Oh, Titanium trades favorably with I want more Cobalt 60. And I think we'll need that if I want to build missile launchers. I'm willing to trade him 112 of this. That's way too much. Can I type it in? I can. Ooh, only 16 of it, though, for that much. Mm. So every seven's going to be worth one point.
We'll just take seven. Return again if you wish to exchange more goods. Kite station. And we take a look at my blueprints, and hopefully we have enough titanium to be able to afford the modules we'll want to be able to construct it. We'll spend research trying to unlock another ship as well, as it were. Let's see. Oh, wow, we've got quite a few more events which, which happened. So two days after, they mentioned that we got to put everything to, to growing food. The vessel that visited the station yesterday was a solid trade delegation. While culturally very different from us, we fitted several maglev loaders for several months worth of food and organic fabricant base. Food rationing has been temporarily lifted. Hey, good. Due to high demand, station personnel wishing to post to Final Hope must have at least one accommodation since the rift event. Oh my crap. Everyone wants to join us. I guess we're going to get more experienced crew soon. There will be a survey team. There will be a survey team safety orientation this evening in security. This will be open to all interested personnel, space permitting. Nice. We're gonna teach our people how to survive on the on planets as well if they, if they come with us. We realize this is an extremely stressful situation that is not likely to be resolved soon. All personnel are still expected to comport themselves according to Starcom code of conduct rules, both and both on and off duty. Additional positions are available in station security. See Lieutenant Curran to apply. All right, we don't even actually need any more any crew. We didn't lose anybody. Five hundred seventy-five research. All right, so shipyard first and blueprints. So I would not mind getting access to the Guardian, but I need missiles and the Stellar class type of ship unlock first if I want that. Missiles, Stellar Class. We also need 73 Cobalt 60, which we don't have, and 204 Titanium, which we do have. I'm oh, sorry, no, we need an additional 204 Titanium, I think is what this is telling us. So we don't have enough for that. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's do this research anyway. So... Let's unlock the Explorer class. That's four addition, additional modules unlocked. And we can't go any further at this moment. We need to find something to continue our unlocking increased sized ships. Hmm. I will eventually want missiles. Do I want to do so now? However... I'm gonna want. I'm gonna want several of these upgrades. I have enough for a few of the things I would want, but not everything. Let's go to the shipyard next. So. And everyone, I'm done flying, so it's just going to be me. Actually, I guess I can do this off-screen really quick. At least design the ship. So I will be right back. Actually, do I want... Uh, let's do something else first. I'm going to go ahead and research an armor upgrade. Armor construction. Well, that's construction of armor modules. For 80 research points. And those... Require 120 titanium and 25 neutronium to place one. Armor reduces damage taken by the armor module and neighboring modules. Armor is more effective against small amounts of damage than single large attacks. So this module would block how much? Uh, it add 300 armor to itself and everything adjacent to it. You can see as well that our max speed goes from 25 to 23. Whereas a reactor does not decrease our max speed as much. Armor has more mass and will slow our ship down more. Alright, I'll be right back when I'm going to design a ship.
All right, well, this will be acceptable. So we gain one reactor, two armor modules, and another engine. The widow armor modules are placed. The only things that aren't being protected are our command section, these two reactors, and the survey module. But all the weapon systems are protected as are our, our engines, which is what I'm mostly worried about. So that should suffice. I still have 405 research as well, so I think we will upgrade our plasma weaponry a bit more. We can grab another energy recharge. So, let's see. Which of these do I want? More damage or more reach? I think more reach would be more would be useful to us at this moment. So let's grab bolt modulators. Increases the range of our plasma turrets. With 165 left, I think we'll take turbo efficiency to decrease the energy cost while turboing. It doesn't affect us obviously for not com fighting. But I'll be using turbo a lot during com during fighting as well, and I wouldn't mind being able to reduce that cost. Uh, alternatively, what would I take? We could unlock missiles, but although we wouldn't build any at the moment. Deep charging would increase my energy reserves. I don't think we need that. Actually, we could grab long-range scanners and wrap that up. At which, yeah, you know what? Let's take this. So, long-range scanners will be grabbed. And now I feel like we can go back and look at all the sectors we were in already. And see if our scanners detect anything else out just outside the range where we had been earlier. And we'll just hold on to this extra 75 research points. Oh, or we could grab distance manipulation. Which will let our tractor beams further try to pull in these swarm probes. Let's grab this. Holding on to the last 25 points at the moment. Oh! Chief Engineer Zen Chiang also has something to tell us. In order to increase Final Hope's size beyond current limits, I need to make some modifications to the shipyard that I don't have the resources for. We will need 120 titanium and 25 neutronium to expand the fabricator's layout range. Alright, let's see what I can do. We occasionally have to bring supplies back to Kite Station to further unlock extra research. This is one of those. Man, my ship looks like a... For some reason, I think of, I'm thinking of a spider when it comes to my ship. Alright, well... Let's end the episode by sweeping through our own sector. Checking to see if there's anything else just outside the scan range that we might have missed before. I'm imagining there isn't, but just in case, we'll, f we'll fly. we we'll use a turbo to make this a little faster. Nothing by the sun. How about where we first met the Chitek? This plant down here. Okay. It's not to say there isn't anything down there, but nothing we're detecting on scanners. Let's fly through this sector as well. We're going to be fly through all the sectors next episode, everyone. So it's probably just going to be me fighting Chitek. Double checking all this to make sure we didn't miss anything just outside our scanner range. And that will do. I suppose in the next episode we can also double back to some of the places that we left, not fully explored, like the Chitek Warrens. Oop, that's where the warp nexus is. We should go down this planet next. The Warrens will go back to that one factory and disassemble it, as I said I was going to do. Yeah, with the engines, with the thrust burning, when we fire, you can see our energy going down. It does go down very slightly now, but not too bad when firing, so we can destroy all the asteroids the next time we are present in an asteroid field, I suppose. Alright, and there's nothing on in this sector. Let's just get to the next one. 
And we'll call the session there, everyone. Well, after we destroy that singular Chitek scout. Oh, actually, there's several Chitek here. But that one's far away. That one can st stay there while we chase down. That is also a cargo ship. Oh, I hear a swarm probe. I see a swarm probe. We gotcha. At first glance, this probe's databank seems to record only mundane celestial phenomena. However, careful analysis shows patterns suggesting that these are false memories that were used to replace whatever the probe actually recorded. Kind of me curious. Nice try, cargo. Try to get away. Oh, you weren't even carrying anything, so it doesn't matter. Let's get the rest of these destroyed really quick, too. Thrust will now greatly assist us in catching the Chitek. Of course, I have to be able to hit them, which I didn't do a very good job of there. Once again, gold is used for engines, cherolite used for reactors, yttrium used for plasma turrets. I think yttrium will also, uh, some of this stuff will be used for other types of modules in the future as well. The spacing of the guns have changed the feeling for how they track to the targets a bit. Look so much damage we're taking from the destroyers now. The armor modules are just absorbing their weak plasma damage. Oh, here's another mod uh, swarm module. Let's see if we can grab that one too. This probe narrowly averted being swallowed by a black hole, coming within two million meters of the event horizon, collecting valuable data on its tidal forces and perimeter hawking radiation. Nice, 280 research from that. Again, the more of them that you capture, the faster they begin to become. Alright, everyone. I guess we'll swing past this planet really quick. We'll also head out there to... That was where that one probe warped in. We'll go back there really quick just to make sure. There was nothing else out in that direction. Without ramming into it, that will probably heavily damage or destroy us. Nothing detected. All right, everyone. So let's stop here. So thank you guys for watching. When we come back. We're gonna fly to the nebula, back here, up to all these locations where we've been before, just to make sure we didn't miss anything. We'll probably stop by the citadel as well. I don't think we've unlocked whatever it takes to add, to activate that device yet. And we'll also dis uh, dismantle the mining station and keep on exploring the Chitek Warren until we can't go any further. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you all for watching. And take care, everyone.